hello, hello. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? <laughs> to this night? How are you doing this uh, tonight? Just tonight. What am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Welcome to a new live stream. Bienvenidos a un nuevo live stream. O un nuevo en vivo. Uh, today we're going to talk about some big inventions that came from Latin America. So some of these inventions, maybe I will say most of them, you you have heard of them. I'm pretty sure of that. And uh, but at least I mean, I knew some of them. I knew some of them were created by some people from Latin America, but some others i was like what really that's that's crazy that's amazing well guys before we get started don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell icon so you can get notified every time we live stream also please visit smlessons.com for more free spanish lessons and to download free crossword puzzles and whatnot So please feel free to go to smlessons.com. Uh, I want to give a big, big shout out to Quebec and Stella Sabatini. They are Cafecito members. Thank you so much for the support, Quebec and Stella Sabatini. You're amazing. I really appreciate all the support. And also, if you want me to give you a shout out, please just click on the join button down below also you can see on the live chat or you'll see well you can see right now on the live chat um there is a link at the top of the yeah at the, at the top of the live chat you can see a link you can click on it and you can check out the memberships on this channel guys that supports this channel a lot so if you like what i do Please take a look at the memberships. Okay. Also, by the way, you can use the live chat to say hola, to just uh, interact with us. And um, I see someone already on the live chat. So, um, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I don't think I can pronounce the, um, the username. But hola, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Okay, so here with me is the mysterious voice. How are you, mysterious voice? I'm good. Are you eating some snacks? Yeah. <laughs> are you tired? Nah. No. I'm all, right. all good. Yeah. All good. It's nice to have a day off once in a while. For sure. Um, another thing, guys. Before I forget, please give this video a like if you like it. If you like what we're talking about, and um, have you? Well, we're going to go over roughly 10, 10 inventions that came from Latin America. Mm -hmm. So are you excited about this topic? Yeah, I'm always excited about stuff. Yeah, I love history. You, you do as well. Yeah. And also, I like to know about inventions, about especially big inventions that came from different countries. I think the world is a very creative world. <laughs> There are so many yeah. ama amazing inventions. And um, let's get started. Yep. So the first one that we're going to talk about is about the color TV. Okay, the color TV. This was invented by Guillermo González Camarena. Okay, so I'm just uh, showing you a picture of, um, of Guillermo González Camarena. He was born in Guadalajara in Mexico. So did he, he not, did it not have a color picture. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because it was long time ago and uh, he was an electrical engineer. And also, he invented color TV. So, um, the invention is called color wheel type of television or something like that. So, um, 
he's he's his TV was the first one, the first color TV patented in the U.S. and in Mexico as well. And um, I found out that NASA still uses that kind of TV. No, well, that's great. So yeah, that is amazing. And uh, yeah, I knew about this one. Did you knew? No. I mean, did you know about this one? No, I didn't. And um, it's just crazy because sometimes you have different things at home, many things at home, and you don't think of where they came from or how they were created or invented. Yeah. And you don't realize how small the world is when you think about it because just for an example, the stuff that we're using to do live this stream. live stream <laughs> comes from all over the world, yeah, you know, like yeah. the internet's invented in the States, yeah. you know, color TV. So by that extent, the monitor we're using, that technology the was, monitor. you know, uh, LCD. Yeah. Uh, the RAM in your computer is made by Samsung. So the it's webcam. from Korea, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, there's just so it's like the applications the that we apps use. themselves yeah it's yeah. like the whole world comes mm -hmm. together just so you can mm -hmm. do stuff yeah it's, it's so really cool. right now how many inventions are are we using yeah like oh, the yeah. microphone the computer uh the applications that we're using and youtube itself yeah that's a big platform and all of that was invented by different people and it's it's just amazing how the human mind is so creative. I just love that. So we have some somebody on the live chat as well. Do you want to read the? No, you can read it. <laughs> Me? Why? Oh, because it's in Spanish? Okay. KS, welcome KS. How are you? Bienvenido or bienvenida. Um, buenas noches. Astronauta de azúcar. <laughs> That's sugar <laughs> astronaut in Spanish. <laughs> Buenas noches, que es. Um, oh, y la voz misteriosa. So that is your your nickname, mysterious voice, voz misteriosa. I yeah. love that, que es. It sounds <laughs> really good in Spanish as well. <laughs> um, que es also says me encanta aprender. En la historia de la escuela secundaria era mi tema favorito. So KS is saying that um, KS loves to learn. Um, en la historia de la escuela secundaria. So history was apparently KS's favorite topic. Nice. Yeah. So Mine at too. school. Yeah. So that's amazing. Thank you KS for sharing and welcome. Okay, so that was the first invention, color TV. Now we have like different kinds of TVs, right? We have yeah, the there is well, the old tube TVs, and then there is uh, mm -hmm. there, there was plasma, and then L LED. LCD, and or then LED. LED. Or LED now LCD. What's, sorry. What's like the newest? The newest TV, is the you know? L LCD. LCD. Yeah, Ooh, that's the like the, the newest are LCD, and now they're like. Uh -huh. 4K, uh, 4K. for computer monitors, and the ones that there's are 8K curved now. as well. Yeah, there's curves, there's yeah. 3D. Yeah, I mean, all is kinds. that better to have well, a lot that curved, kind of TV? Um, depends what you're doing. It gives you like a more natural field of vision. Okay. So it creates more depth. It's really good for gaming, apparently. They're, really? They're like $400 monitors, though. Whoa. Crazy expensive. But yeah, uh, yeah we have one at work. Crazy. One came in yesterday. And it's... Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's 32 inch. Really? And 4K. And it was wow. like f almost 500 bucks. Whoa. But it's really? like a curved, curved huh. monitor. Yeah, but those, yeah, they're super cool because when you're playing, for an example, like a first person mm -hmm. shooter, like if you're playing Halo, mm -hmm. the curve on the screen gives you like a more natural field of vision so it kind of reduces and a lot of people have a problem getting dizzy mm. when they play first person because of the field of vision mm -hmm. so this kind of makes it you know what i remember what? i remember um watching about the mandalorian uh filming part mm -hmm. of it yeah. and um, apparently they're not using a green screen they're using a massive um 
I don't know if it's LED screen, oh, okay. but it's like a round, oh, round that's, like that's a cool. round L, some sort of screen, nice. LED screen or something we like that, to... and they like play the. Um, they play. They have the scenery, oh, all the landscaping cool, yeah. and all of that. The landscapes that's and really cool. and it's they're not using green screen yeah, anymore. That's really so that that's is awesome. amazing. Yeah. So that's a new invention. Yeah, a newish invention. A new way to use it. Yeah. yeah so that is that's amazing. Cool. That's yeah. That's a great invention as well. Okay. So the second invention is the contraceptive pill. Ah. Okay, the birth control pills were created by or co-invented by Luis E. Miramontes. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you his picture. And um, yeah, he invented or co-invented the first oral contraceptive contraceptive pill in uh. 19. 56 that's, that's a long crazy. time ago yeah. 1956 and uh well he was a mexican chemist um so yeah it's crazy how you know the contraceptive contraceptive pill was invented i think it, this invention was made out of necessity oh for sure for sure and it's just crazy how a pill can help you have that yeah control it's, over yeah that. it's it's super important to have because it Im impacts so many people and just having mm -hmm. access to it helps you know with like poverty with uh like teen pregnancy like all kinds mm -hmm. of all kinds of issues are solved by that just that tiny little thing right yeah, like and it's, it's it just insane how far reaching its effects are outside of what it's like meant mm -hmm. to do, right? And you can plan better yeah, your, your life, your life, and uh, you can actually have kids whenever you want to have kids, yeah. right? So this invention was a big one, or is still, still a big yeah, one, the contraceptive huge. pill or the birth control pills, and it was created or co-invented rather by the Mexican chemist Luis Luis E. Miramontes. I just find it kind of funny that a Mexican guy mm -hmm. helped invent the contraceptive because Mexico is like the most Catholic country in the world, other than like the Vatican. Y yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And they're, you know, they're all about have as many kids as possible, right? Yeah, that was, I, th I think that was before. before. I think it <laughs> that changed, but by that time, I mean, 1956 yeah uh, maybe some people were thinking about you know if i have 10 kids that's fine mm. <laughs> <laughs> but i think by that time they they were starting to change i'm not sure no. do you know anything about it no during the 50s 1950s well, i know like 1950s like as far as like this us and stuff mm -hmm. goes like they were far from being that liberal oh yeah you know they were they were very very well that yeah, was the like the, the, 50s, the right? height of the, the red scare and the cold war and all that so mm. that was well nevertheless it was a big invention yeah, cool. that helped a lot of families and um luis luis e miramontes was a great um chemist that helped to to create the contraceptive pill so that was that was great thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> that's greatly appreciated for sure now the next one invention number three is the hot air balloon no, that's, so this is huh. a, a tricky one this is a tricky one because um there are inventions that happened around the world yeah. almost at the same time, okay? So this inventor was actually one of a few that mm -hmm. came up with the idea, one of the first ones, okay? Yeah. So it's because, you know, Brazil is part of Latin America. Yeah. And, um, well, is it, it's more like 
Yeah, right? Well, it's in Latin America. It's yeah. in Latin America. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Even though they speak Portuguese. Yeah. I still there. think it, it counts, I think. Yeah. Or it's more like South American well, yeah, South American country. Still kind of counts. Yeah. Anyway, um, the inventor, one of the first inventors of the hot air balloon, <coughs> sorry, was... I'm going to try to pronounce the name. Sorry, I don't speak Portuguese, but the invention or the inventor was Bartolomeo, Bartolomeo Lurenco de Guzmao. Okay, and um, he was from Brazil and uh, he was the mind behind the initial test for the air balloon. And uh, well, the air balloon was very important back then during 1783 <laughs> that's a long time ago it was a, a form of transportation yeah. and uh, one of the first i will say the first air transportation that existed yeah right yeah so okay so this happened in this happened in 1783 but it, in the beginning Around 1709, the balloons were made of paper bags with hot air inside. I'm not sure what kind of balloons, just like small ones, I assume. Probably. And once the air in the bag became lighter, when they became lighter, then they attached a basket to it and used that for transportation. But here is a painting of um, this creator or this um, inventor Bartolomeo Lorenco de Guzmao from Brazil Brazil <laughs> <laughs> so it, that's that's a peculiar invention yeah I didn't know that he was one of um, the one of the people that had the initial test for the Arab yeah. one that's so that's something I always found interesting that if we were to for to like lose knowledge of everything that we that we have access to and how it works and how it was made mm -hmm. and we start from scratch we'd invent all of it again the same things do yeah. you think yeah i think so because <laughs> maybe not in the same order and maybe not in the same places mm -hmm. but you know like somebody would stumble on math somebody would stumble on you know from their Astronomy, astronomy, chemistry. It's just how the, everything. the world just, works. As yeah, well, it's just right? it's so cool that there's this almost like a formula to how things work, right? Mm -hmm. And like I said, it doesn't matter where. And the fact that, for example, with the hot air balloon, mm -hmm. that different people in different parts of the world all came up with mm -hmm. the same idea. It just shows that you know. Yeah, and that happens when you have an idea and then you see it happen a year, you know, like yeah. after you thought of it, or weeks or months after you thought of it, and you're like, "I had that idea. I yeah. thought of it. I could have been a millionaire <laughs> or something like <laughs> that, but somebody else did it first, yeah. right? So we think alike." sometimes and it's just crazy it's it's very very interesting for sure okay uh, okay yes también económico era mi tema favorito en la escuela secundaria 8k está subiendo 8k 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 uh, ah? grade 8 ah? that's, that's interesting Uh, also, probablemente no pensaste que escribiría tu nombre en español. Well, <laughs> probably I didn't think that uh, KS was going to write uh, my name in Spanish and also your nickname. So, well, both of our yeah. nicknames. <laughs> so that's, that's, yeah, it's true. It's true, KS. <laughs> okay, so um, now let's talk about the next invention. We're gonna talk about the artificial heart. Wow. Okay, so this was invented by Dr. 
Do Dr. Domingo Liotta or Dr. Domingo Liotta and um, he was born in Argentina in Argentina uh, he's also the son of Italian immigrants so in 1969 he created the first artificial heart to be successfully transplanted into a human being Okay, and also his creation is on display at the Smithsonian Museum. I don't know where that is. Maybe, I don't know, in the U.S.? I think the Smithsonian is in the U.S. Yeah, I think so. But uh, here's a picture of Dr. Domingo Liotta. And he, uh, he was, I don't know if he's still alive, but he was born in Argentina Argentina and uh, that's amazing yeah he saved the lives yeah oh yeah um, the artificial heart so like how can someone think of making that like how like probably he knows the human heart better than anyone else yeah yeah and how it works and just to come up with that idea of making an artificial heart i'm not sure what this heart is made out of probably plastic or how it works or yeah, how it just, works yeah, it's, it's wild that people can think of these things yeah you know yeah and i wonder once you have an artificial heart how does that work you know yeah. can you do the same things i wonder no nah, idea no, yeah, no idea <laughs> But never, nevertheless, this was another yeah. great invention, Dr. Domingo Liotta. Okay, so the next one is, I didn't find a picture of the, the inventor, but uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen this uh, kind of invention before. It's another necessity, a very important invention. I'm talking about the neon, neonatal or artificial bubble okay do you know what this is yeah what is it it's like an incubator an incubator 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 yeah. <laughs> so um initially this is this is not like the first incubator okay mm. because the first incub incubator i read that was uh, created or invented in France, I think, oh, no. a long time ago. But it looked, it looked nothing like mm -hmm. the incubators that we can see nowadays. And um, the interesting thing about this incubator is that, uh, well, first of all, it was created by Peruvian by a Peruvian engineer, Claudio Castillon Levano. Okay, so uh, that he is the inventor of this specific bubble. And this bubble was called, um, what was called? Well, let me tell you why this is important. This invention helps to save the lives of high-risk babies born before full-term gestation, okay? Um, the incubators were used in France, as I said before, during the 1880s. Uh, but Levinas design that is called the incub incuven, incuven regulates temperature. Okay, so that's an important thing. Regulates temperature, also reduces risk of contamination to babies, and also. Um, the incubus patent was published by the United States United States in uh, 2004. Also, more than 20 years of research and work by Levano, Levano and his associates. So this invention has changed the world, especially during that de the last decade. So. Um, that is something really interesting. Yeah. It helped once again to it helped save lives well, for, essentially. For sure, and it's crazy because if you look at just how much life expectancy has increased over mm -hmm. you know over the course of history, and 
Definitely. The, the biggest impact on life expectancy was infant mortality. Really? Yeah. It's because you know how, for an example, like life expectancy mm -hmm. in, you know, um, like the 900s or, you know, was like 30 years old. That's because it's not that people were just dying off in their 30s. It's because so many infant deaths. Mm -hmm. That's why people had, you know, 10, 15 kids because you might have two survive. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And yeah. now now it's um, completely different. Oh, yeah. Completely different. So, yeah. So this was a great, great, sorry, great invention. The next one that I'd like to talk about is CAPTCHA codes. <laughs> so what do you know about this? What is a CAPTCHA code? It's the <laughs> test if you're a robot. <laughs> exactly. So if you, probably all of you have had this happening to you when you need to log in into, um, if you need to log into a website or if you need to, what else? If you need to download something. Uh, change your password in some your cases. Change your password. Yeah. You have to, you see some sort of weird numbers and letters and they're all distorted so that's a captcha code and um it helps like like the mysterious voice said it helps distinguish between a human and a robot okay so this invention was created by uh louis bon louis von Anne. okay and um he is from or he was born in Guatemala okay so that's a picture of him and uh, some people think that this is an annoying online access code what do you think is it annoying uh, <laughs> I mean it's it is what it is it is what it is it's you necessary know. yeah yeah so Luis Bon An is um, is an important inventor uh, he's also known he's known as a genius grant and also he co-founded the language learning app Duolingo oh uh, that's, that's cool. crazy that's crazy um, so Von Ann also created the cy cyber security or rather he created the captured codes to distinguish a human from a robot and also another interesting thing is that he gave this to yahoo for free yeah that's cool so that is crazy yeah right so he cared noble. more about inventing yeah, and not about from, yeah. the money behind it yeah. right i just wish it honestly like as annoying as it can be i wish it was more widely used Cause really? for, yeah, because for an example, right now, uh, a lot of places are having, a lot of people are having problems, for an example, getting the new Xbox or new PlayStation mm -hmm. or on, you know, like Newegg, Amazon, mm -hmm. get, buying like mm -hmm. video cards, like any in-demand like hot item mm -hmm. because people create bots to oh. just constantly refresh and the moment it's in stock to buy it. Mm -hmm. And the all the all the companies would have to do is put in a captcha code before checkout and mm -hmm. that would fix the problem really because that would so why because that they would do stop it? because they don't care they because don't care? as long as somebody's buying it they don't care who's buying it and how it's just mm. that it's being bought hmm. you know hmm. so i mean it sucks for so it's a great invention I to think prevent it is. a lot oh, absolutely. of absolutely problems yeah, yeah especially I, uh to prevent what spam yes yeah, uh bots from stealing bots. your information right. from in some cases, if they were being used prop being used smartly, mm -hmm. stop people from you know scalping items and things like that. Hmm. And similar, like I, I do have to say, I dislike the Google version of it. Why? Where it asks you like click on all the pictures that are a truck. You oh know? yeah, yeah. Like that kind of stuff because or, I feel, or street lights. Yeah, because I feel that instead of trying to stop the robots, mm. you're just helping teach them. Oh, because really? because I think that that's Google's a put put your tinfoil hats on. I think <laughs> that's Google's AI trying to learn. So when it goes Could all when it goes all Skynet on us, <laughs> it's gonna know how to hunt Sky us down. 
We're basically teaching Terminators. Uh, that's, that's, another, <laughs> that's another crazy thing, AI. Um, yeah. It's... It, I don't know. It's, it's just something that... Um, it's a great invention. It can it can be really helpful, but it can also go very badly. I just don't think very I badly. just don't think that humans as a species are smart enough to deal with it. Maybe. Yeah, you know, maybe. Well, I think we'll I see. think we're too too narrow-minded and too shallow to really to treat yeah. it properly. It it'll, it'll get abused and then, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because we all saw the movies. AI AI will be some sort of new species yeah oh yeah right it's not going to be a machine it's going yeah. to be a new species that will i don't know help us or somehow we need to coexist with that and work yeah. together but yeah it's something really crazy anyway <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the next invention the ebook okay one of their earliest ebook was made by Spaniard. I know oh, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm talking about Latin America and all of that, but Spain is also part of this whole Spanish world. And um, the, one of the earliest ebooks was created by Angela or Angela Ruiz Robles. Okay, Angela Ruiz R Robles. Ruiz Robles. Can you try to say the name? Huh. Try it. Ruiz Robles. <laughs> huh? Ruiz Robles. But the whole name. Angela Ruiz Robles. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And um, That's a cool painting. Yeah. That's really nice. I found this on the image on Wikipedia. And uh, she was a teacher in Galicia, invented the first mechanical, mechanical book. In 1940. In 1949. Wow. So that's, um, yeah, a long time ago. She was looking for a way to allow her students to carry fewer books to and from classes or, yeah, the classroom. So she created a mechanical encyclopedia. It was described as a mechanical, electric, and air pressure driven method for reading books. That's Ooh, super ah. cool. I'm curious what that worked like. Uh, I can like. I can um, try to find it really quickly. Let's see if I can do that. But this was like a crazy looking ebook. Okay, so let me see if I can find it really quickly for you guys. They just the image of that. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Oh, there's a picture of her with it. Yeah, so we can see the picture here. And uh, also the ebook is this one here. So it looks I very... still don't understand. I don't understand how it works. How it works, but... I don't know. I don't know, but <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Yeah, Looks very interesting. futuristic. <laughs> but... Yeah, essentially that was the one of the earliest ebooks. So wow, that is amazing. That's, it looks yeah, very that's super cool. Intricate. <laughs> I don't know how, how that um, worked it, either. It's one of those inventions that was way ahead of its time, I think. Yeah, but it's pretty you cool know. that she she was a teacher and she wanted you know she, she wanted her students to actually yeah. carry and, and, more information yeah. somehow. And it's another invention that was made just out of the desire to make somebody's life easier. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it was exactly. not about money, it was just about, about money. helping and kids. And education. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very, very good. Angela Ruiz Robles, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, now we are going to talk about a peculiar submarine. Do you like submarines, yeah. don't you? Yeah. So yeah. what do you know about them? Do you know any fun facts? Um, I know when, when I get them, I like to have, uh, you know, the certain order. So like lettuce, then tomato, then... <laughs> what? Submarine. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're talking about Subway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that Jules Verne wrote about the submarine uh, before it was even a concept. So he's yeah. technically credited with inventing the submarine because uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Right. He described it, he wrote about what it looked like, how it worked, everything like wow. long before it was actually made. Wow. Funny you say that because um, we're going to talk about some inventor that uh, who was inspired by Jules Verne. Yeah, yeah but uh, I don't believe this is the one that we um, that was inspired by the, mm. those books and by Jules Verne. But we're talking about Isaac Peral. Okay, Isaac Peral. And he was also from Spain. Okay, he was from Spain. Now submarines are like nowadays they're still around. Yeah, they're still around. Yeah. Probably very advanced and yeah. very. They probably do a lot of things. Uh, I'm not sure about how they work, <laughs> but they look pretty oh, now cool. They have like nuclear submarines. Ooh, and, yeah. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. And they're like huge yeah, as well. Yeah. And super heavy. So, um, Isaac Peral designed the first electrically operated submarine. Okay. And it launched, it was launched in 1888. So, long time ago. Oh, so he made an electric one. Yeah, an electric one. Okay. And um, leading to other countries to design and test similar submarines around the world. So his submarine was called the Peral Submarine. And it, this submarine is considered the world's first electric battery operated submarine. Okay. It could travel at max speeds of nearly eight knots and hold a crew of 12, 12 people. Hmm. So I'm going to see if I can find quickly a picture of that submarine, that submarine. I think it will be pretty cool to see it. Um, and it was called, remember, the Peral. Peral or Peral submarine. Okay. So let's see how it looks, guys. This is the submarine. I think this is. Uh, that was more. Mm, is it? Or this one? That one, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'll say the other ones look a bit more modern. Mm hmm. So it looks interesting, don't you think? Yeah. Huh. It's very. Mm, very simple looking. Yeah, but well, it's they crazy need to be aerodynamic, like not aerodynamic, but hydrodynamic. <laughs> hydrodynamic. Kind of, they look like a whale, you know? Yeah, it looks like a whale, totally. So that is very, very impressive. I think it's very good as well. I really, it's, it's just interesting to see how this submarine was the first one that was electric somehow. And uh, I think that's just very good yeah i like really it cool part of history for yeah. sure uh so do we have i see oh i see some i don't know what happened there but i see people on the live chat quetzal hola hola quetzal <laughs> como esta bienvenido or bienvenida uh, ks also says estas personas tienen una Gran imaginación. These people uh, have a very great imagination oh, or a big imagination. So that's, yeah, definitely, for sure. KS also says, los libros electrónicos son buenos, pero yo prefiero los libros físicos. So ebooks or ebooks, yeah, ebooks are really good, but I rather you know the old books the me physical too. material yeah like the paper paper yeah, me too books. i i prefer the paper mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it feels feels nicer to read i think than off of a screen i don't know i think it depends on the situation for example if you're traveling 
it's better just to have an ebook I, and yeah. just take it with you anywhere so you can read a bunch of things but if you are at home like, and you have time to sit no. down and read and enjoy a little bit the whole experience i yeah. think a paper book is better for that situation yeah totally do you agree well i mean like i under i, see, I know the versatility of ebooks but i just I don't know. I just the don't. The screen, maybe. Yeah, I just problem don't for you. find it as enjoyable. I don't retain mm. what I read as really? as much as I do off of paper. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I just I. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so the next we have only two more inventions. Okay, guys, the next one is the X-ray microscope. Uh, I don't know. There was an X-ray <laughs> microscope. Did you hear about this I one? I knew of it. I don't know exactly what it's used for. Mm -hmm. Well, the X-ray microscope was invented by um, by the Mexican American physicist Al Albert Baez, and um, was he helped to invent along with other people, the X-ray microscope. Uh, another uh, person that was part of this invention was Dr. Paul Kirkpatrick, and this happened in 1948. Hmm. Okay, 1948, again, around yeah. the 50s yeah. and, and whatnot. Baez was a PhD student at Stanford, Stanford University. And that happened during the 40s, 1940s. And then he worked with Kirkpatrick and they came up with this microscope. And yeah, they wanted to examine living cells. No, uh, that's cool. Mm hmm. Also, besides that, Dr. Baez led a long life of contribution to the sciences before passing away in 2007. And it's just interesting. He's also the father of the singer Joan Baez. Oh, nice. Do you, do you know yeah, this? Yeah, of course person? I do. Really? I don't Yeah, I love Joan Baez. What does he... He she, or she? She. Uh-huh. What does she, she sing? One, one of the, her most famous songs is... Uh, I can't remember... The, I don't know if the name of it is that, but it's Nicole Ann Bart, I believe, is the name of the song. Really? Yeah, it's like a protest song. Mm. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, she, really good. Yeah, she's a good musician. Brianna Lee, hola, hola, Brianna, welcome. It's nice to read you. <laughs> How are you? Uh, welcome to the live chat, to the live stream. So this X-ray microscope, I mean, I've never heard of it before, but it's pretty cool that it exists because it helps people, you know, just examine living cells and probably do other things. Yeah. So that's amazing. Okay, that was another great invention. And lastly, we are going to talk about something related to space, the out of space. And um, I'm talking about the liquid fuel propulsion engine for rockets. That's so cool. Yeah, wow. That's so cool. This was invented. This also, this is a bit controversial because when you Google who created the liquid fuel propulsion mm -hmm. engine or the first one, right? Mm -hmm. For rockets. Let, uh, let me guess you get Max von Braun. I don't remember, but you get an, a different name. Is it a German guy? I think so, yeah. yeah I Ma think so. He, Max von Braun, he's the one who invented the the rockets that NASA used to get on the moon. That's probably why mm. he was a uh, German scientist during World yeah, War II. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he invented the rockets. They were the ones that were being used in the yeah, V1 and V2 right. rockets that were being dropped on London. Hmm. And then after the war, the Americans basically hmm. brought him on to work for them. And then he 
start, he founded NASA. Wow, like that's he was the crazy. First, he was the first uh, head of NASA. Wow, that's yeah. very interesting. Uh, but let me tell you that the problem with this, or first of all, I'll tell you the inventor, okay? The inventor was Pedro Paulet. Pedro Paulet. And I'm going to show you the picture. That's him. His mustache. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he, he looks very fashionable. Yeah. Like, yeah, very fashionista. Um, and like the bow tie, too. Yeah. So, um, he was from Peru. He was Peruvian. And he was, con it's, he's considered the first person who built in 1895 a liquid fuel propulsion engine for a rocket. Wow, 1895. Okay, 1895, long, long time ago. And he's also considered one of the fathers of aeronautics. Wow. Okay, and modern rocketry. And uh, he was the one inspired by Jules oh. Verne books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just amazing. I kind of want to read those books now. Yeah, yeah we have we, we have a few, right? Did, you, did we buy them? I don't remember. Yeah. We I think we, we have, have one. Like so many, I don't remember what yeah, we bought. We have one that I wanted to read and then forgot about it. But <laughs> anyways, um, or don't don't we? Have I don't know if I we don't bought know. them. I don't know. I'm just I'm thinking know. about it now. We can always now. get them. <laughs> <laughs> They're good books. Okay, the problem, the controversy about this invention between the German mm -hmm. scientist and also um, the Peruvian scientist Pedro Paulet is that he did not publish his work until 25 years later. Uh. So he had the invention but didn't publish it until like way later, 25 years later. So... Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's a big problem about this. But he is considered one of the fathers of autonautics. Autonautics. Aeronautics. Aeronautics. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, it's just crazy. That's really cool. In 1895. Like, yeah, 1895. That is nuts. Like. Yeah. In it's just amazing that someone thought of that long yeah. time ago, and um, and just it's crazy that he just sat, he did nothing with it. Yeah. That he just like, he I just, just sat created on it. it. Yeah. It, I think this is similar to Tesla. Yeah, that he had Tesla all of his inventions. And Edison, yeah. right? Situation where, uh, I don't know, it's just controversial, but I think Tesla was the one who came up with a lot of uh, things yes. before. Before Edison, Edison. just yep. stole people's work. So, I mean, that's... Yeah. So, his creations, uh, Pedro Paulet's creations, include jet engines. So, not only liquid field propulsion engines or probably it was similar to similar big, engines yeah, right big jet engine. uh, proposed propulsion systems and that uh, and an airplanes or airplanes that would use thermoelectric batteries and rocket engines so he was an engineer <laughs> hmm. do you call and someone who makes engines engineer <laughs> 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 or am I confused <laughs> jeez he, he was an inventor inventor well, he, he was an, an inventor engineer, engineer. I mean, <laughs> mechanic <laughs> no mechanic, no, mechanic. Just fix stuff engineers fix design it. it right so he right. was an en he was an engine here <laughs> uh, slash in, inventor in, in the literal term <laughs> yeah exactly so uh, that is I really like this invention I love everything related to astronomy. I love like I, I, I when I see that they're gonna launch a rocket, I'm always watching. Yeah, I'm always watching, and on you know they live stream those yeah. events now, yeah. and it's, it's just impressive. Cool, yeah. 
Yeah, so thanks to Pedro Paulet and many other inventors, we can travel around the world yeah. in a fast way. <laughs> So yeah, those are the inventions, guys. I think that's very cool. I really enjoyed this topic. And um, let us know. Quetzal is saying Aztecs had chocolatl, chocolatl, chocolate, chocolate. Yeah, cacao usage went back to the Olmecs, though. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate is, yeah, that's... comes from Mexico. Comes from Mexico. So, yeah, I love chocolate. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. That's very, that's very like good I've too. always been curious about how people came up with different food, com like different foods and different combinations. Mm. Like, who, for, for an example, you know, like wine. Wine. You know, who forgot. Some, like some a grapes. bunch of smashed grapes in a barrel and then decided oh, maybe it's still good let's try mm -hmm. it you know? yeah somebody forgot it and then yeah they were like oh we don't waste any yeah, food let's, here let's let's see so. maybe, maybe it's still good it's it's only it's only been six <laughs> months, <laughs> you know? six months. No. and then when when they felt tipsy yeah they were like "Ooh, this is good stuff yeah <laughs> Who knows? I that's I don't know, guys. I don't yeah, know. I, don't I know. know or even even like because uh, my dad used to make rakia, rakia, and mm. that when you make it for mm -hmm. the first, I want to say two weeks. I don't remember exactly, mm -hmm. but for the first two weeks, it's just like peach juice or a peach, like plum. It's just like plum? it's juice. It's mm. super sweet and it's like a kid's drink. Really, but then like three days later you know it, it'll three days well, like it's it or sits for like month? it ferments for like a couple of weeks but it's like this the fact that like up to like a certain point it's still a kid's drink just and then like a day later it's like adult drink 90 proof you know alcohol that <laughs> wow. like not knock you out for a week wow, you know? that's crazy um yeah there are so many good inventions or even like just small ones yeah like soap yeah oh yeah soap is something so necessary it's something yeah. small i actually have uh, another channel where i talk about inventions specifically yeah. um it's in spanish and nosotros los humanos that's the name of the channel i have so many channels <laughs> nosotros los humanos that means we humans and uh yeah i talk about different inventions and i recently talked about soap yeah. how soap was invented and it started a long time ago yeah. and it was out of necessity yeah. as well or if Just, you if you want to be traumatized toilet paper toilet paper <laughs> that's another if, one if you want to appreciate the time we live in <laughs> that was another one yeah <laughs> yeah i some people it's so funny when they say, oh, I wish I was living in the yeah, past. No, and no, no, you no, don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think right now it's just a good yeah. moment. <laughs> but yeah, soap was created, was used um, before to do other things, huh. to clean some sort of um, wool, wool, wool? Oh, yeah, yeah. wool and other kind of cotton um, fabrics yeah. or so it before wasn't used making for fabrics. Or fabric. Huh? Yeah. So it wasn't used for like cleaning yourself. No, it was that's, not. Uh, it was not. So uh, Romans used something that looked like a it looked like a paste or something. Yeah, it was made out of like flowers was and of, stuff, wasn't it? It was made out of um, ashes, I believe, mm -hmm. and also um, I don't know if it was animal fat as well. I mm -hmm. don't remember too well, but they used that just to put it on the hair to make it look you know kind of reddish uh -huh. reddish and uh it was not used to clean themselves hmm. isn't it that crazy yeah and even later during the 1800s yeah. people who came to america from europe they didn't use soap they had soap they used it for like everyday things like mm -hmm. for example cleaning 
domestic use. Yeah. You know? But they didn't use it. And sometimes they didn't even shower because they thought that water was something that will make you sick. And also the... the mm. um, was it the Black Plague? Yeah. There was something related to that. That water was going to make you sick or something like that. Mm. Or created the problem, the the pandemic they yeah. had <laughs> was crazy but anyways that's something that uh, i kind of read about really and I, yeah it's super interesting and yeah soap is a great invention toilet paper what other simple simple <laughs> invention you think was uh it's it's just amazing i just the wheel the wheel <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the wheel <laughs> like it's yeah. just a circle you know, like the circle, but it's yeah, fire. It's just, well, the fire could have been an accident, you know. Yeah, could have been like lightning but hit, they, lightning hit a were, tree, and but it went from that to yeah. I'm gonna make fire, yeah. you know, myself. Yeah, but like the wheel just changed the industrial revolution as well completely. Yeah. It's just crazy. If you yeah. start thinking about each one of yeah. the inventions that pretty much shaped yeah. humanity, and it's just crazy. And it's the, in yeah. interesting. The crazy thing about the wheel especially is it's never been improved. The wheel. It's still... Really? Yeah, we've Still made kind of different of versions of it. We've made it out of different stuff. You mean the shape? Stuff. Yeah, but the shape is perfect. It's perfect. Doesn't you know? need any, any change. Yeah. Like that's, any modification. That, yeah, that's the, that's the impressive thing. That's, uh, that whoever invented it invented the perfect solution. You know? For sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, that was it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. And let me see if there is anything else on the live chat. KS says, La historia de cualquier cosa es muy importante, una necesidad. So the history of anything is very important. And it's a necessity just to, I assume, to know about yeah, it. Yeah, it, it should be. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. always good to know. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, KS, for sharing. And that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening to us just talking about inventions that came from um, Latin American inventors. So that's amazing. And some two people from Spain that we talked about, two Spaniards. So now you know a few more things about Latin American people. In, in Spain, in Spaniards as well. And um, if you missed this live chat, just leave a comment down below. What do you think? Uh, do you know any other cool invention that you would like to share with us? So remember also, do you have, well, before, do you have anything else to add? No. No? No. No? <laughs> Okay, well, remember guys to subscribe and also click on the bell icon so you can get notified every time we live stream. And you can also see on the chat, on the live chat right now, right here at the top of it, you can see a link that takes you to the memberships on this channel. Guys, that supports this channel a lot, helps us to keep doing what we're doing on this channel to have free lessons for you guys so if you really want to support this channel please just click on that link or click on the join button down below and uh, just check out the perks and the memberships have just monthly fees they're so so cheap guys um, essentially you're paying for a cafecito for coffee uh, for some a couple of cervezas that's another one and or if you feel generous if you feel generous you can uh, just invite us some tequila so <laughs> 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 just check that out guys and uh, that's it for tonight give this video a like if you also like this video if you want to support this channel as well you can just give us a like take care of yourselves guys be safe 
be creative <laughs> and we'll see you next time bye